GM, man, am I right or what? I mean, GM has gone downhill. Dude, you guys used to build some great, great trucks. I used to love those 90s Suburbans and even the early 2000 Suburbans, Tahoe, Sierras. What beasts of vehicles. Then you come up with these $100,000 cars with active fuel management and displacement on demand. 55,000 miles and I need an engine now? What? the heck? Now I can't just blame GM because that Nissan has 80,000 miles and it smokes. I'm lucky the transmission still shifts. I have Audi problems too. I mean like what the heck is any car back in my day? They used to build cars that would go for forever. Not no mo. Today this $20,000 Cadillac Escalade, that's what I paid for it. $20,000 needs an engine. Now I paid $20,000 because of that. This thing is a platinum. It is the best of the best Cadillac you can buy with over a hundred thousand dollar MSRP in 2016. 55,000 miles, I had it shipped up from Texas knowing that it needs an engine. I don't even know how much it's gonna cost me. And hopefully when it's running right, we can supercharge this thing. I don't know, today's video is all about this headache, hundred thousand dollar platinum Escalade that runs like dog do. My name's Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. P stands for platinum. It's got the 22s. It's got the side steps. It's got the chrome down the side. It's got the better headlights with one, two, three, four, five lights on each. Yes, that's 10 headlights plus gigantic fog lights. This is the best Cadillac Escalade you could buy. And despite these things constantly letting me down, now that I know them, I still like them. Now this is the Platinum. It does not get any better than Platinum, except the V, which they didn't make for 2016. Can we turn this into a V? That's what I'm trying to do. And now, Alcantara interior right here. That's what you get for upgrades. We have the Escalade, all season floor mats. We have the leather wrapped dashboard. Wanna see something really cool? Oh, right here? Okay, yeah, that charges my phone. This is upgraded. These are usually broken, as well as this, usually broken. Watch this. That? What the heck is this thing taking up my center console? Yeah, that is a cooler. Who the heck needs a cooler in my center console. Like I'm gonna put six packs of soda in here or something. You can put six packs of soda in here? Ain't nobody need that. But how many nonsense things can we add to a Cadillac? Let's throw a cooler in the center console. Nonsense. Sunroof. Alcantara headliner. Now, if you can't watch enough movies above you, you can watch them in front of you. We have Blu-ray player there. We have Blu-ray player here. We have Blu-ray player here. We have a DVD player there and a DVD player here with not a lot of leg room. Now, even these vented seats in the rear are Alcantara as well. We have armrests that aren't broken. They're usually broken. Armrest that's not broken. The cup, the plugs are not falling off. All season floor mats. This thing is insanely nice. It's just, it's a lot of things. Like why do we need five DVD players in a single solitary car? How much nonsense can we add to this car? Now, it runs like hell. Let's start it up and see if the check engine light is flashing at me because this thing just showed up yesterday while I was gone. Oh, come on, man. Someone just pulled right in front of me. Okay, we have crash assist up there. I can see it. We do have a check engine light on. It is not flashing just yet. Now, if you remember, these all are scrolling, not tapping. Yep, it is running rough, but it's not flashing at me. Give it time, it will flash. Now, usually with these, the active fuel management like puts premature wear on the lifters and the lifters turn sideways and then they wear unevenly on the cam. I'm hoping we don't have cam problems and I can just replace lifters and I don't have to take, remove heads and stuff. No, this isn't gonna be an easy one, which is why I don't do it. I send it to somebody. I have a, a specialty mechanic, a technician that used to work for GM that now does these things for us. I'm bringing it right to him. Now, with having somebody do this for me in mind, subcontracting is a perfect segue into this POS. I can't, we can't know everything about Audi and know everything about Cadillac and know everything about Jeep. So for that reason I subcontract things out to other technicians. Like that Jeep went to a guy that specializes in Jeeps and he told me it needed a lifter. So I paid him $860 to do a lifter on it. Now this is a car I already sold and like a hundred miles later, check engine light came on, cylinder two misfire. Coil and plug later, another like 60 miles, check engine light comes on, cylinder two. I'm not doing more than coil and plugs. So we send it to a mechanic, check engine light on after I spend $860 and drive it home. So I picked it up yesterday. I say, hey, all right, I'm gonna, let's take this home, drive it a little bit, make sure the check engine light doesn't come on, so I give it to the customer and then check engine light comes on again and then he's all upset at me. Check engine light, $860 later, we're still at the same problem we were at yesterday. Also, early the next morning. So today's a fun day at the shop. We have the Hummer in the garage, that's up on cars and bids, or may have already sold by the time this video comes out. The boat, an absolute disaster, started to sink on me and we're bringing that back to life. The limo, you guys all know the limo. The Escalade is back. 
back. Our Escalade convertible is a fun one. Do we want a car dealership or a hobby shop? It's starting to turn into a hobby shop. We have the 49,000 mile Camaro, which is wild. My CTSV from Florida, the A8. If somebody wants an A8, four liter, twin turbo, V8, all wheel drive. I would love to sell that thing. Now on a different topic, let's talk about sponsor for today's video. I love having sponsors for these videos. I get to talk about products that I enjoy using, enjoy working with. Today's video is sponsored by MGM Slots Live. They support our channel so you can help support them by installing the game. You can earn real rewards. The cool thing is it's free to play. You can download the MGM Slots Live using the link in the description or scan the QR code right here on the screen and get 10 million free chips if you're a new player. It's available on the iOS App Store and Google Play and it's as easy as just clicking the link on the landing page and you'll see the game pop up. Now I downloaded this myself just by clicking the link. It comes up on my Google Play Store. Download it instantly. You can register yourself to get your 10 million free chips. MGM Slots Live features my VIP chips. The more you play, the more you collect. And with these chips, you can actually redeem real life rewards in all of the MGM resorts and many other partners worldwide. MGM Slots Live brings the excitement of Las Vegas casinos straight to the palm of your hand wherever you are in the world. As the ultimate Las Vegas experience, MGM Slots Live features dozens of free to play slot games and offers the most unique bonus games and live slot tournaments in actual GM casinos. MGM Slots Live features live slot and bingo tournaments against other players from around the world and its top games include Piggy Pop, Flashy Card, Wicked Fortunes, and Wind Zone. There is a link in the description down below for you guys to try it out yourself. Go enjoy yourselves. So far my GM tech has been pretty good, hasn't let me down, and I'm crossing my fingers that we keep the streak a rolling because on everything else it has just been an absolute headache. Let's drive this to the mechanic and hope it makes it. Man, this job is flipping tough and it is exhausting. And I give people that work nine to five, like I give them credit because I would love to be done my day, but I work till midnight every night and that's what being a business owner is. Now I preach like, hey, you can do this yourself. Startyourdealership.com, I'll teach you how to do it. I, it's great, it's awesome. And there are so many perks and so many benefits and like money, there, it's just extremely lucrative. But I am constantly putting out fires and it is exhausting mentally like there's a reason so many car dealers are divorced and it's because they overwork they're overtired they focus all their time on work and not family and home so you have to make sure you can find your balance but like man cars are exhausting and you're a constant problem solver that's what i consider myself a professional problem solver trying to figure out what is wrong with this car fix it clean it sell it okay rinse repeat buy another car figure out why somebody traded it in figure out why somebody sold it figure out why i bought it or why it was at the auction, fix it, clean it, sell it, hope it doesn't come back to me because I did or did not find what someone was trying to hide from me when I bought it. It is exhausting. But I paid 20K for this car. Let's say I put three or four into it. I'll own it for 24. It's 50,928 miles. This is a $35,000 truck. So you're talking potentially $10,000 profit for me taking a risk. Maybe not. Maybe I'll lose my shirt on it. You never know. You just have to win more than you lose. I am talking way, way too much. You're probably sick of it already. Let's drop this truck off. Look what else I just noticed that's typical Cadillac. The screen doesn't work. This is a screen issue. You can buy them for like $60 on eBay or Amazon. And they're not a terrible amount of work to repair. I do love this about it. Like Iron Man's helmet, I always say that. But that isn't the problem. How's this shot? Come on, man. How's it shot? Yeah, there we go. This screen is the issue which I'll have to replace. And one of the other things that I like too is the glove box opens here. Your parking sensors there. Adjustable foot pedals, adjustable suspension right here. It's pretty neat. This car is really elaborate and really intricate. And there's so much bang for your buck if they could just get it mechanically sound. I mean, I could fix the engine and then this thing I know is gonna have transmission issues because the valve body is made of plastic. So there's premature wear on that too. So it's a gamble on, okay, if I buy an Escalade, is it gonna have engine problems or is it gonna have transmission problems? Because it will for sure have one or the other in this generation. Leaving it with the pros, out of sight, out of mind. I'm just gonna let him deal with it so I don't have to. And we will see it when it's finished. One week later. Here we go, the finishing piece. So what actually was it? What's What was up with this thing? I'd love for every, this video is all about GM V8. Right, right. Oh, I yeah. assume it's active fuel management, yes. displacement on demand failed or something and wore out the can, but you tell me. So, um, from like Gen 4, Gen 5 V8s, uh, the active fuel management lifters fail. And um, no one's really gotten to the point of why the camshafts fail. My thoughts are sometimes the lifters spin in the 
in the um, in the guides, yeah. and it beats them up. Or... So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in yeah. just for the people that don't know. Active fuel management, displacement on demand is GM's way of meeting EPA guidelines. It's the four cylinder shutdown. Right. So when you're driving your eight cylinder and it shuts down to four cylinders, that's your active fuel management, right? Yep. You but... give it gas. That's your asking for more displacement on demand. Correct. Sure. Yep. Okay. Now I have seen lifters that have spun sideways yep. and prematurely wore the cam. Yep. Uh, have you seen that yourself? I have seen that. Yeah, they'll right. the the guys are plastic and they spin in them, and um, it just it's uh, it doesn't roll anymore because there's a little roller on the bottom, and it just and it wears the cams out that way. Um, the there's a little spring. I got some. I actually got an engine tore apart over there. I can show you um, the spring stick, and then the lifter kind of just beats on the cam and then they release and then you don't hear the noise and it, it causes a misfire and you know I, through the grapevine I, I heard it only adds like one percent fuel mileage yeah i've noticed my, <laughs> like the fuel really doesn't matter you can no. shut off your active fuel management by having it tuned out but they also sell like little obd plugs right right it remains on your obd port underneath the dash yep. and it just keeps it shut off so if you buy something with low mileage that you want to preserve get rid of it yep. don't tell the epa i said that but get rid of the freaking thing well, during, nobody needs it well during covid when the the computer chip shortage general motors took the active fuel management out of some of them did they yeah Oh, now certain ones. Yep. <laughs> different from what you did here, transmissions are notorious. Yep. The on, six speed. on the six-speed transmission, what happens with those? Because you told me once about like the valve uh, body or what was yeah, it? Yeah, no. Well, the torque converter. I think it co it coincides with um, with the active fuel management. So the torque converter slip. Um, there's a lot of torque converter slip. So think of it like riding the clutch in a sense. Yeah. Um, so. I don't know exactly wh why they do that. It helps with, I guess, shifting and when it goes from eight to four, but then excessive slip, um, the little discs wear out and then it goes through the transmission and it takes out the pump and then so on and so on and so forth. So. Did you say there's something else that was made out of plastic, some plastic balls in the torque converter? Yeah. Oh no, in the valve body, the um, the check balls are now plastic. So in the past they used to be metal. The metal used to wear in instead of aluminum, but now the plastic's wearing out and there's, it's a lose-lose with that one. Yeah. You can't you can't really win. Plastic it. parts failing internally in the <laughs> engine plastic parts failing internally in the transmission yep. just a uh, common theme here can you show me a block do you mind so yep. everybody can see yep. what happened now i actually have a block on rotation here so i brought an engine here you built it waiting for a car to fail brought the car with the failed 5.3 to you you put in the good engine and now you have the bad engine here that you're rebuilding for me for the next failure that's how common this is <laughs> oh don't worry but if, if you have to undo the whole thing it'll be okay. Go for it. Show us your expertise. Yeah, yeah. So this is the what they call a V loom, and it and it, um, it uh, sends oil pressure to the lifters on and off whenever it needs when it needs oil to the lifters and when it doesn't it shuts the lifters on and off layman's terms so these are what we're talking about here this is an active fuel management lifter so those springs what happens is a little um, pin inside that locks and unlocks so basically instead of going up and down on the camshaft it free freely rotates so it doesn't open the valves uh, on certain cylinders, on the active fuel management cylinders. Awesome. So those springs will stick down and then that's when it beats up on the cam. Um, or like we were talking, see the roller? Mm -hmm. so I've seen to, flat spots on yeah, the roller Yeah, so they'll before. spin that way and then the camshaft eats the way the, the yeah. roller and the camshaft itself. Cool. I have another camshaft. This is my camshaft, right? Yeah, this is the- Now we can like. see it yeah. right there. So smooth, smooth, smooth here and that one's grooved so that was causing the misfire right there right so what it does is yeah it miss, so it doesn't open the valve as much as it should mm -hmm. and it causes low compression on right that cylinder and, there it is and that is a pretty common symptom like i've, that's every, I've seen that happen several times yep they're uh i mean this is worst case you know a lot of times you'll get lucky and have a lifter do a bad and we'll catch it before like this is when it starts so yeah. your hair is when it starts oh yeah yeah you can see so it's that starting one there starting yeah all right thanks for that yeah. just say you think it's what, well, well one of my theories is lack of maintenance because Manufact back back in the day it was um what three three every three thousand yeah, miles for all change now it's ten thousand fifteen thousand right a year yeah and this is what happens and that's what happens but the manufacturer wants you to buy a new car 
Yeah, right? right? If it rusts out in 10 yeah. years, you need a new truck. <laughs> need if a new it truck. engine fails, you might as well just go get a new truck. So this right here is my wife's 2015 GMC Yukon Denali with 137,000 miles. And every time it comes into the shop for service, oil changes, tire rotations, whatever, we detail it and go through it as well. My kids are animals. They destroy every single car I own. So they get in there and they eat the Cheerios and they Dorito chips everywhere and they leave leftover Gatorades everywhere. They just destroy cars, which is why every car I own, we cover from head to toe in plastic on every carpet. You'll see there's plastic everywhere. That way, when we go to detail them, the carpets aren't destroyed. I just pull the plastic up and put new plastics down. Now this thing's getting aged and every time I take it in for service, I end up selling them on her. And what happens is I bring it in, we clean it, we detail, we go through it. And then I look at it and go, geez, I think it's ready for sale. Let me see what we can get for it. So like every six to eight months to 12 months, I list a car for sale just to see what we can get. And like within a day or two, it's sold just like this one. I listed it for sale and the next day someone came and looked at it and they're buying it. So I needed to replace it and the Escalade happened to be at the same exact time, which is a perfect transition. And also if you've been following my Ferrari flip series, I started with $400, bought a car, fixed a car, sold a car. Until now, if you're watching this video, I either am going to buy a Ferrari next week or I've already purchased the Ferrari, one of the two, I'm already there. That's very much like my wife's transitions into vehicles. When we first bought our first place together in Florida, we started dating in high school. When we got our first place, we were kids out of college. We bought like a $3,500 car for her. I sold that car. I bought her like a $6,000 car and then sold the $6,000 car and bought her like a $7,500 car. Then we moved back to New Hampshire to start a family. We bought our first SUV. And then from our first SUV, we got like a minivan. And then the minivan had leather. Then it had leather and navigation. Then we needed something bigger. So we got like a Suburban. Then the Suburban had leather. And then we wanted like a Yukon. And the Yukon is now a Denali. And now the Denali is now a Platinum Escalade. So every car I've owned, I've bought, driven for eight months to 12 months and sold it for more money than we purchased purchased it for. For example, this Yukon, we paid around 16,500, maybe 17,000 after everything about eight months ago. We drove it for eight months. We used it all the way through the winter. I am now 23,000. $23,000, $24,000 in my Escalade Platinum. I just sold this for $25,000. So we upgraded from a Denali to a Platinum Escalade, one year newer with 50,000 miles, and we made $1,000. So that's how my, like, my wife's vehicles are always changing because I'm always finding the next car. I don't want to keep them too long because then they depreciate. So I sell them before they depreciate, if that makes sense. Now with this one, it's trade. Someone's going to pick it up today. They're trading in their car. We have upgraded from a Denali to an Escalade and made a profit, which is kind of neat. So guess what doesn't work on the Escalade? Oh, the Q screen. Yes, so the Q screens on the Escalades commonly don't work and not just Escalades, Cadillacs in general. If you take it to the dealer, I'm telling you right now, they're gonna tell you you need a new like stereo system, which would cost you upwards of $4,000, between two and $4,000. It is not your stereo. It is your Q system. It's the touch screen, which I'll show you quickly. So you'll see Dave right here has the radio already out. This screen right here is what stops working. It has nothing to do with any of these items. It's just that screen for some reason. Now, sometimes they crack. There is no cracking on this. It happens with the GMC Yukons as well. My wife's Denali previous to this one was fine. There was no cracks in it, but it didn't work. This was, I think like $35 on Amazon. It shows up as a screen like this. Now I'll put a direct link in the description down below. You'll see that's it. It's just a replacement touchscreen. And Dave, how long do you think this whole project will take you to, uh, to do? Probably about two hours. Two hours start to finish? Yeah. All right. Give or take. So we'll go back into the car. I'll show you what needs to be removed. It's pretty extensive going in here. It starts with the trim piece here that goes to the dash over there. Then this is the panel right here and everything unscrews. I mean, it's very simple to do. These are even just clips. Don't break these. They pry out slowly. Do not break the clips or the panels won't line up again and they'll, they'll just kind of pop out. But you can do it yourself. We have a tool like this that just kind of pries everything out as we need it. A lot of it's like seven or eight millimeter bolts to hold the radio in on the sides. It is a fairly simple yet somewhat time consuming project. So the radio didn't work. I'll fast forward to when it is, we're just gonna reverse the process to put everything back in installed. Doesn't need to be reprogrammed or anything. And I'll show you when the radio is installed that hopefully everything works. The new screen is officially in. And as I said, we just reversed the process to install it. It was fairly simple. It was about a two hour process. I get to do the honors. Dave hasn't even tested this out yet. He left the plastic on it for me. Let's find out. Ooh, so satisfying. All right, what's gonna happen when I touch the screen? By several houses All right, we have stereo. Is it gonna work? Three, two, one. 
Oh, heck yes. All right, we have radio stations. We have all our controls. How do I get home? So many buttons. Projection, what's projection? Anybody that knows what projection is, please explain to me. Is there a projector in this car somewhere? How does that work? I'll have to read the owner's manual, but I'd love for one of you guys to tell me. All right, we have video, nav, projection, phone, climate. Wow, that's great. It works. That is great news. All for the low, low cost of like $35. Now, Dave, the mechanic, had told me there are several models or versions of this. The previous, like there were two that were specific to this vehicle. One did fit, one didn't fit. The one I got comes with a larger setting, so it's universal. So that when you're shopping, if you're shopping on Amazon, look, because some of these are specific and some are universal. I got a universal one, it was very easy to install. And now I have a stereo. This car is pretty clean, but there's still some stuff on the carpets. I love this tool, this is a Typhoon. I have these in my Amazon store, like in the links down below. It's not a paid advertisement. I just use this all the time because it blows everything out way quicker than a vacuum, watch this. <laughs> I did all that in a matter of a couple minutes. The entire car is now clean because of this thing. I love this tool. I always put these plastic mats down before I put my weather techs in because it protects the carpets. I'm eventually one day going to resell this car. So that keeps all the carpets clean and protects it from my wife and my kids. I even do these corners here just to keep it like, look at this, this isn't gonna do anything. So I put plastics down before I put those down. And there we go. If you have kids, you know, just like my grandmother's living room, everything is officially covered in plastic. Carpets are protected. Now we can throw the floor mats back in and the carpets are protected and do the floor mats in. And then I'm gonna put, actually, I, you can see I put the original floor mats underneath the covers because I wanna keep those protected as well. And then I can put the floor mats in and the weather techs and all that. And Yes, in case you're wondering, I did the third row as well. And voila, my attempt to try to keep my family vehicle as clean as possible. We have plastics, we have floor mats, we have plastics, we have floor mats, we have a giant barrel, we have weather techs, we have plastics, we have more weather techs. And even you'll see this is something that makes me really happy. I live in New Hampshire. These are always rusty. It's solid, which is just amazing. Look at how much stuff. We have plastics, floor mats, and there we go, weather tech. So everything underneath that is going to be protected and clean. See your new car? Escalade, platinum. See the coolest thing? Heated cup holders right there. Keep your coffee warm. Also, open this up. That is a cooler. You keep your drinks cold. Or just store DVD players in there. There should be headphones, yeah. Pretty cool, right? What do you guys think of this car? This is so cool. This is nice. Just handle back there. I'm right here. Nice, right? Yeah, it is nice. So here we go. She is running well. Smooth, quiet, no check engine lights, no vibration. Transmission shifts smoothly, which was a concern of mine too. I knew the engine had problems, but the transmission could be off because of the engine. These things are known for transmission problems too, so it could very well have a transmission issue after the engine's fixed. I got lucky, everything is great. Engine smooth, transmission shifts smoothly. Oil change was done obviously with the engine repairs as well as coolant fluids. And we did rear brakes and wipers. This thing is gold, we're ready. It's a 2016, not platinum with 62,000 miles. Oh, this is a platinum. So this is somewhat similar to mine, but black. Pearl white's a little more desirable. And there it goes, it's at 37,000 and has 10,000 more miles than mine. Nope, oh, it's gone up to 37.2, add another like five to seven hundred dollars in auction fees too, so like 38 grand. Keep in mind too, that's wholesale, meaning dealers are paying that at auction, not like to the public. They're still selling that for a profit to the public after. So here's that 50 grand I was talking about, 45,000. So this is probably a $45,000 truck now. Now that it's repaired, it's probably, it's a 2016 with 50,000 miles. This is probably a forty-five dollars to $50,000 truck, all said and done after all repairs. Keep in mind, this is a Platinum too, and it has a flipping soda cooler in the center console and every other option you can think of. So this was a gamble worth taking. I know that I have a guy that can fix these things. I knew that it was from Texas. I knew that it had no rust, and I knew that it was a Platinum. So sometimes it's worth the gamble and this time it paid off pretty, pretty well. Now I'm not going to sell this one. I'm going to give it to my wife because I've been in the market for a white Escalade Platinum because I kind of want to supercharge it and I might not tell her about that. And that's for another video. 
think I'm also gonna do like maybe some electric exhaust cutouts just to throw her off. I have some cutouts in my shop that I can put a switch in and actually have a wireless remote. So I think it would be hilarious if I was just driving with her and the exhaust started opening or even better if I wasn't with her and the exhaust started opening if I was driving behind her and she didn't know. That would be pretty fun for me. I, I like to torment her just a little bit. For now, video's done. The car came out great. I'm pumped about it. It was about a three week process start to finish. And now I pay, I'm like I'm about 25 into this thing and I paid 20 for it. I paid about two to have it shipped. I paid four to have it repaired. So I'm into it for about $26,000. And I now have a $45,000 to $50,000 vehicle. I would say that's well worth everything we invested into it. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And this one for now, I would say we won. And the idea is to just win more than we lose. So I hope this video was entertaining, informative. Like damn you GM for making products that fail like this between torque converters and plastic ball bearings and cam problems and displacement on demand problems and active fuel management problems and, and lifter problems. Like what the hell, man? This was a $100,000 car and those things are failing at 50,000 miles. That is ridiculous. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you later. Adios.